Hello and good morning. Welcome. I am Nicole Lombardo, co-founder of Get It Done Gals Business Coaching, and I'm so excited to have Cindy Metalucci today from The Pulse here in San Diego. And, you know, just welcome to this segment, Cindy. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm so excited to talk to you today because you are hustling, you're building an empire, you have so many great things going on, so I can't wait to dive into that. But before we get into that, I just wanted to share a little bit more about Cindy. She is the host of The Pulse, and The Pulse covers local events and video marketing and interview style for businesses in San Diego. So what Cindy does is she tries out different services, she talks to clients, gives behind the scenes, and that way new customers know exactly what they're getting when they work with local businesses, which is such a great uh, spin on things, which I love. She also has a full service multimedia for hire video marketing company specializing in producing interview style stories through video. So if you're looking to showcase your business and need a really good video for your website or for marketing, make sure to reach out to Cindy. So I would love to start, Cindy, with your journey of how in the world you started The Pulse and how you got to be where you are today. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't a direct road, let's just say. <laughs> so a lot of twists and turns. But um, when I was in school, I was always loving people's stories. I loved journalism. I loved English. I you know, was loving to kind of dissect how people do the things that they do. And then what happened when I graduated college is I ended up moving to California and getting into sales. So I kind of got stuck in the corporate world and I worked my way up the corporate ladder. But I knew, you know, I grew up with a family of entrepreneurs. I knew I wanted to do my own thing and be an entrepreneur. So it took me quite a long time, probably about 17 years to come back to my passion. But when I was in the, the corporate world, um, I was working in sales and marketing for a Fortune 500 company, and a lot of my clients were entrepreneurs. They were owning bars, restaurants, everything, and they had this issue. They were so good at what they did, but they weren't good at marketing their business. So I said, you know what? You have such a unique business. I love your story. That's so marketable. So I asked my three top clients if they would be my little guinea pigs, and I said, I have this idea. I have an idea for a web show. I want to come out, I want to try your products on camera, I want to photograph it, I want to film it, and I want to put a little video together for you. So those three clients were, you know, God bless their heart, because I did not know anything that I was doing at the time, but they let me come out, they let me do that, and we created these videos, and it was all done on the web. And so um, that's how it started, and then it kind of grew from there. It was very organic, and people kind of were like, wow, this is interesting. So that's where my whole desire for the poll started. And that's, um, you know, getting back to my journalism roots. But of course I was doing the corporate thing. So I was doing corporate by day and the pulse, you know, nights and weekends, but that was the initial start of the polls. And so after 17 years, you started kind of the side hustle with, let's say beta testing these three clients. And so after the three clients, what happened from there? Did it start to really take off or did you just step by step, keep it a side hustle until it became a full-time thing? That's a really good question. So it basically was a side hustle. So for about three years, I started the Pulse March of 2011. So for about three years, I was doing that side hustle um, and I was loving it more and more and more. And it was like, just, you know, that was my fire. That's what I really wanted to do. Um, but it was about how do you market this? How do you make it profitable? <laughs> you know, it's a passion project and that's what it started as. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, it starts as a passion project, but then it's like, well, what do you do? I had never owned my own business. So it just sort of, um, it just sort of gained momentum. So basically my clients liked it. I had built a really good network from being in the corporate world. And I think that's really important. So people started to see what I was doing and they loved it. And so it was very organic and people were like, Oh, we want you to come to our event. You know, we want to create this, this buzz. And so it started to propel. And then basically, um, I would say we started to get more clients. And then I think after like about, it was about three years, I just kind of, you know, like most people, I was burnt on the corporate thing. I was making people a lot of money and I thought, I really want to do this. I want to take the dive. And so that's what I did. So three years ago, I said, I'm, I'm at a corporate world. I'm going to take that dive. And I did. Um, I, 
I probably could have waited a little longer and sucked away a little bit more money, <laughs> but, uh, but I was just ready. And I think if you're going to do something, you got to do it 150%. You can't do it half-assed. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Those, th that critical time frame. there's, you know, we're in this world of online marketing and you can just put up a group coaching program and online products and then kind of sit back. And, you know, when people say, I don't want to work with people one-on-one, -on -one, I just want to put together a group or just an online class. And I wonder my, to myself sometimes, like just starting out the gate, how do you, how do you see that going? You know, how do you see that? Because you don't have that momentum that you worked for three years to create or working with beta testers and, and all of that. I think that's what Lindsay and I really um, talk about within Get It Done Gals and Savvy CEO School is build your foundation get the visibility, connect with people. You have to be so passionate about this because if you're just looking to kind of put something online and sit back, things aren't going to move like you think they're going to. I love that you say put 150% behind it. Well, and it's interesting too, what you're saying is like my background is sales and marketing and then I start this company, right? And I'm thinking, I forgot that I had to sell. And it's like, <laughs> wait a minute, I'm the sales and marketing expert, but you start running your own business and you don't think about that. You don't think about those things that you need to keep doing for the momentum. And it's so important, which is why you guys are so good at what you do because you help people with that, but people don't, they just want to start a business. They're like, I just want to start a business, but it's not that easy. You know, you have, there's so much you have to do before you can, you know, before maybe it's going to make money and that's stressful. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I guess we wouldn't get into all of this building business and entrepreneurship if we realized that the road was going to be tough. You know, I, I think that the passion has to, it's like children almost, I would imagine. I don't have children, but the idea of, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's a lot of work keeps me from having them right now because I have another baby. I have Get It Done Gals. I have Savvy CEO School. I have other businesses that I'm building and running. So, you know, it's um, having the time and the capability to get through that tough road is really important. So I want to circle back to when you did go full time and you realize, oh, okay, I should have maybe stayed in my corporate job a little bit longer, or maybe I have to sell. And now what does that look like? What were the steps that you took to get through that rough patch? Or not rough patch, but that like, oh my gosh. Well, yeah. I mean, I think what happens is I think that there's a time where you're running on adrenaline and passion for your, for your company. And, and I think that was great. And so I was so burnt on the corporate thing and I was so excited and I had so many ideas and I wanted to, you know, do that with the pulse. And then what happens is then you realize, oh my gosh, I'm the CEO. I'm doing accounts receivable. I'm doing my social media. You start to, because I wanted to, do, I'm like type A, like I'm sure you are. So I wanted to do every facet of my business. And I thought, okay, I don't know how to edit videos. I don't know how to do this. I had to learn everything. And I, like I said, I didn't want to do it half-assed. So you know, there's a, there's a time where it takes you a few, takes you some time to really polish your skills. Um, so I was doing all this stuff, learning how to edit, you know, learning how to do this. I edited the first like 300 videos that we ever did and I still edit. It's crazy, but it, it, it's a matter of trying to figure out, you know, how can you, what's the next step? Cause you can't do everything. Right. And if you're going to grow your business, you got to delegate so I think for me, it was more of a learning process of, okay, I got to let go of a little bit of control <laughs> I can't control everything, but yet I'm still involved and I still do my social media. You know, I still do a lot of the social media. I still am involved because it's, you got to be authentic, but you have to kind of step back and you have to say, okay, you know, here's, here's my goals. Like, where do I want to go with the business? Where am I going to take the business? And then find out those priorities and then go, and then circle back to, you know, what kind of money do you want to make? I think that's really important. I think that you have to remember, like I left the corporate job. I left a huge paycheck. I left, you know, benefits, company car, all that stuff. And then you go to your own business and you're like, wow, I have to get my own health insurance. You know, it's totally a different thing. So I think what you have to do is kind of, you get to that point where you step back and you say, okay, you know, here's my business. Here's my finances. Here's my priority. Here's my goals. And then I just went back to how goal oriented and driven I was in the corporate world. And I put those same things that I used into play with this. And it just took me a while because I forgot. <laughs> I was like, 
I forgot, I'm running a business here. So I took my goals, you know, like when I, when I used to work in the corporate world for sales, I had, okay, here's my annual goal. This is what I want to do. Here's my stretch goal. Here's when I really take it up a notch. You know, I'm going to, I want to do this number. And then what I do is I like, I would break out all those goals by, um, you know, by month through 12 months. And then I break up those financial goals and those profits that I wanted to do by um, week, by day. So now I knew every single day, here's what I need to drive for the company. Here's what I need to drive. So I think it's kind of pulling that back and, and kind of shifting your mindset and not being so much in your business, but like, you know, I'm running a business, but I'm, I'm trying to make money. So, I mean, I hope that makes sense. So I kind of went back and did what I did in the corporate world and set up all those goals so that I knew where I needed to be. Um, and then just sort of prioritized my day and stopped, you know, checking email all day long, you know, and tried to do the things that make you more, um, you know, make you more apt to make money for your company and, and build your company. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. It, it's, it's, um, I think that a lot of people I hear from get lost in the details of all the shoulds. I should be on social media. I should be on every platform out there. I should be blogging once a week. I should be doing all of this. And instead they need to get outside of all the little nitty gritty detail and they need to look at the bigger picture in their business. And then work backwards and say, okay, what's going to bring in leads? What's going to drive the business forward? What creates that momentum? So that's, I think, really important what you're saying there is you step back and said, okay, how can I apply the knowledge that I know? I think we all have a lot of these answers inside, whether it's intuition in your gut or something of going back to what you learned in the corporate world. I think we know what can move our business forward. We're just not brave enough or we're a little bit scared or we're being fed a lot of marketing messages that are amazing, but it keeps us in that FOMO and squirrel stage. Well, yeah. And it's also like, what do you want? Like if you don't have, like people don't have these goals or they don't know what they want with their business. And I think that's where it's like leery. So it's like, you have to sit back and you have to say, where do I want to go with my business? What's like you're saying, what's my overall goal? You know, um, do I just want to be here in San Diego? Do I want to be nationwide? Do I want to take my platform to a larger audience? You know, do I want a different show, a different TV show? I mean, I think that's the thing is you have to figure out what you really want for your business. And then you have to, you have to have the steps to get there. Yeah. I think that's, the big thing that you yeah. need to do, right? And I think <laughs> people are sort of like sometimes, and then your brand is so big too. And you, you guys know that because you're so great with your brand, but like you're building your brand and, and figuring out what's my message and who am I targeting, right? Am I even going after the right people? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so there's something that I've been kind of uh, talking about with some of the people on these interviews and, and talking with uh, clients is a strategic life by design. And I think that what we see with a lot of people in our uh, programs is they say, okay, I need to be on social media, like I was saying, all the shoulds, mm -hmm. but they forget what life they want to create. And so it's exactly the same as what you're saying is you sat down and said, where do I need to be this year? And then broke it down backwards. And that is so much of bringing in strategy and creating the business you want, creating the life you want to make the money that you need to make. Right? I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let's transition into, okay, you started this business and you, you quit the corporate thing. What came first? Did you do the, the interviews or for the Pulse and the web show, or did you start with the video marketing and doing that for people? Which came first and how did that all come together? That's a really good question. So it was funny because I didn't get into the business to do video marketing necessarily. I got into the business more because I had this idea for a show. So that was the initial thing was kind of spotlighting people's businesses. Um, our thing was I loved entertainment tonight. I loved E! News. I thought, wow, they're such cool shows, but obviously they're very celebrity oriented. And I thought, why can't I make a fun show to showcase people and what they're doing in San Diego? Um, 
and bring people inside. So that was the initial idea. And then what I did was I started, um, I had a network. I started going out and going to events and we were kind of like the e-news of San Diego. So we would go to these events. Um, people, nobody knew who the heck we were. It was like, who are these people? <laughs> so we would just show up. We're like, we're the polls. We would do these interviews. We would create these. So that's what, that's what started. It was more of like covering events and, um, and doing interviews and kind of creating something for like a web show. And then what happened was, um, we were really heavy on events, really heavy on going into businesses, showing you like everything that was happening in their story. And then what changed is a lot of my clients started saying, Hey, I want to do a video and you guys are good at video work. Can you help me create a video for my site? And then that's where the video marketing and more of the video production end of our business came in. Um, and it was funny because at first some people were like, well, I don't know that I want you in my video. And I'm like, no, I don't need to be in your video. So <laughs> I like to be behind the scenes and I can help with my marketing um, background. I can really help pull, pull the points out and say, hey, let me help you figure out what points you want to get across because I'm really good at that. You know, I, was, I spent so much time doing that so I can, you know, come up with the marketing points, the script, the storyboard, the idea, showcase your business. And I don't have to be on camera, but I can be if you want me to. So there's that option of me being that third person instead of you selling yourself on camera. You know, I can be that person that's like, hey, this company is great. Let me show you why. So people, so it really depends on the client. But yeah, it was all interviews and events. And then from there, it went to more, it went to video production as another facet of our business. Interesting. I love that. So when you sat down and you, you looked at your year, you didn't come up with this whole thing. It just naturally progressed into the video production. So when you sat down, you were looking at the pulse, the web show and working backwards to say, okay, how am I going to make money and how many events do I need to do? Yeah. And the video production end is a great profitability, you know, Mark for, it's a great way to generate business uh, money for our company. I mean, it's, that's something that I never really thought we would do and, but you have to adapt. I mean, and you know that, and I think that's what scares a lot of people out there, but that's what I tell everybody out there. You are going to change. Your business model is going to change and you have to change because you know what, if you don't, you're going to lose, you know, everybody has to adapt. And I think what happens is you, you see what your market is and then you sort of adapt to it. So it's like now, yeah, we have a web show, we have the TV show, but we also have this video production arm and it's great. And we have these clients that work with us on a consistent basis. So it's like, we're doing constant videos for these, for these same clients. And it's, it's amazing because it's this great relationship that we've built with these clients. So now it's like, Hey, I have an event. Okay. Come cover my event. Hey, I need a video. Let's do this. So it's now it's like we're working with them on several different types of projects. So we adapted and, and it's, and I love it. And I never thought I would love it. And I love being the director <laughs> you know, and being not on camera. I actually love it. It's great. So it's fun for me too. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so you never know what's going to pop up in your business, right? And what your audience, audience gives you feedback. And that's a lot of, you know, the information. I was just talking to uh, a group of people yesterday and I was doing this Facebook live and I said, you guys, I know sometimes you have to put yourself out there and you have to be you and authentic on social media, but you also have to ask for feedback and yeah. see what they want from you. And it, it pushes you to be uh, step outside the box and be better. And so it's exciting to see that you've implemented that right into your business and it's made your profitability go up and it's giving you probably a lot more exposure too because it's on everybody's website. It's not just a web show now. Now everyone's seeing you in multiple areas. Yeah. We, and we actually, that's one thing that I started doing because I wanted feedback is surveys for my clients. So every client that's on our show, you know, we have a process. That's another thing. Processes you got to put in place, right? You can't just, Oh, my business is going to run itself. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful, but you have to put processes in place. And that was one thing that we did. And so we have these processes now where we do surveys um, for clients that are on the show. What could we have done different? What was your experience like? Because I want to know if I want it to be a good experience. I want it to be the best for the client. And if you aren't doing something right, you have to change it. So mm -hmm. that was a really, that was some of the processes that we put in place for the business. Oh, <laughs> so good. I know surveys are one of those things, like half of our products have them, half of them don't. And it's on my list of things to do. And it's so important the testimonials, the case studies, the feedback and the surveys. And it's stuff that maybe you don't necessarily want to, but it's so critical so that other people can experience 
the very best from you. I think that's the ultimate in client care. Yeah. And I think the thing is like, I think everybody can always better themselves. And I think that's the thing is you don't want to get stuck. You know, um, you always like, you got to keep getting out of the box. You got to keep, you know, getting better. And I feel like if you don't ask people and you don't get that feedback, because you know what, not everybody's going to like what I'm doing and that's okay, but maybe somebody does have an idea or maybe there is a tweak that I can make in my business because I'm not the end all know all, you know, I, I mean, it, there's always something that you can do better. And I think that people get, take things really personally. And I think that's one thing I need to work on too. I think everyone does, but n not taking it so personal and, and, and realizing that there's more than one way to do something. And it could be somebody's idea or feedback that changes your business and makes it even takes it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Just like the movie production. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the the events, but you what's the difference between the events and the web show? So okay. So that's a good question. So when I started, before I had a TV show, we did everything on the web. So we had a web show. So we called it our web show. We built our YouTube channel and we did everything on the web. And we still do. We have a huge presence on the web. And then what happened was about two years ago, I got a TV show. So I was able to take that web show and make it a TV show, um, which was awesome because that's what I had wanted all the time. And going back to like goals, I actually said this, I was like, I want, I want a TV show. I started saying it and I started putting it out there and not six months later, I got it. So I think that's really important for people. When you, when you have your goals, make sure you're, you're putting it out there. You're saying it, you're clear, you're like concise with what you want. So, um, yeah, so we still have a web show. We have an amazing YouTube presence. I mean, we have like over 500,000 views on YouTube. So it's like people are constantly watching what we're doing on the web, um, but the TV show is just that fun other facet where we, you know, we bring these people onto the TV show and now we can tap into like 900,000 viewers, like hyper local. Um, and then we're going nationwide. We're in Las Vegas. We're, um, we're in Phoenix. We're in Oklahoma right now. We're going to be going nationwide as well as be on demand. So that'll be able to take, we'll be able to take that, to, you know, for these clients that we're showcasing, we can take it to the next level for them too, which is really exciting. That is exciting. Congratulations. I didn't realize that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've worked out so hard, you know, and, and I know that you're in the community as well. You have a networking group that you put together, um, the elite networking. Is that correct? Yes. I love it. I mean, so like, I always want to go back to connecting people because that's something that I've always done. And especially coming from the sales and marketing world, it's all who, you know, it's all networking. And that's really what helped catapult me. A lot of people say, how did you, how were you successful? Well, I wouldn't have been successful if I didn't have my network. I, it would have taken me double the amount of time to make money. So, um, that was really what was, I think what set us apart was the network of people that I had. And, and I learned from the corporate world to build that army. It was always like, build your army, build your army. And I, I can't stress it enough out there. Any entrepreneurs, you got to build that army, have those networks because those people will, I mean, when you're having a tough month and you're making no money, which happens, that person that's your networking person is going to call you and say, I have a referral for you. And it's like the best thing ever. And that's helped me in my business. So I started um, in the corporate world, I started a, a, a group called Elite Networking and it was all women. And then I went co-ed for like a year. Then we went back to all women. So it's a women's networking group. You guys are part of it. Um, we have about 85 members. They're very diverse from their 20s to their 60s. And um, we meet, you know, once a month, we spotlight, we showcase an, an owner of the business, a location. You know, we get together, we network, we talk about what's going on. So I just think, networking is so important and I love it. And that I, it's, I don't like like any money really on my networking group. It's more of a connection thing for me and bringing people together. But the group that we have really uses each other's services. And I, I love that. Um, it's a resource. And for me, it, it's a way for me to be able to give back in the community and really spotlight the entrepreneurs that we have. Cause we have some awesome entrepreneurs. <laughs> I agree. I agree. It's a really, really good networking group. And it's, I, I don't always make it because they're usually on a day I have something else or, you know, life is busy or I'm out of town. And I always look at it and go, oh my gosh, I'm so bummed versus like, oh, that's okay. I'll care of it next week. I really do enjoy everyone there. I love all the events that you put on. I love that you put it in different places to really show, um, 
it's almost like your show is that it shows that person in their environment wherever that is you know for us we work at home but some of the women in the group have an actual location like we were at a wine cellar one night and we had a dinner and you know that was so cool to not only see the person putting on the dinner and everything she was showcasing but the wine cellar as well well, yeah, in the next one, we're going to do the Talia first class limousines. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to their warehouse and they have this fleet of like amazing limos. We're going to do a limo tour. I mean, so it's so cool that you get to go inside, you get to see it, and then you get to use that. And then there's, there's discounts for the group members. So we get, you know, discounts on services. I mean, when you guys presented, everybody was like, who doesn't want to get it done? Let's learn how to get stuff done. You know, I mean, you guys were awesome when you presented and, you know, learning about what you can offer everybody. I think that's, that's what I love about the group. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it too. So for those of you listening, you know, it's a great way, like, <laughs> like Cindy said, build your army. If you have the online going great, but try to get out into the community. It is about really building relationships. Don't let the word networking scare you. It's just about creating authentic relationships and meeting people in person. And if you walk into a group that you feel it does not serve you, then you don't have to go back but go to the next one. I love that this group is all women. I find that I can connect with women in a better way in the larger groups of networking because uh, our brand really does cater 95% to women. And so, you know, we have a few men, but uh, I love that. I love what you're doing there. And so don't be afraid to get out and network. So let's move into uh, some of the, because you have this web show and now TV show, what are some of the exciting interviews that you've had where you just, you just think back and go, oh my gosh, this was so much fun. Yeah, we're lucky. So one of the things that I love is I love the red carpets and no one likes to work a red carpet like me. I love the red carpet. It's so much fun and it's just like so much energy. So that's probably one of the most I don't know, amazing things that I'm able to do. And so one of the things that we started to do was the red carpet. So we do cover a lot of um, celebrity red carpets, film festivals. We do Sundance Film Festival every year. Um, we get a lot of exclusive celebrity interviews. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, gosh, I, I would say Katie Couric. I loved interviewing her. She has had some amazing movies come out. I got to interview her and I would have to say like, she's always been somebody that I admired. Um, and she was amazing when I got to interview her. She was, because I think she's, a, was a, you know, a journalist, journalist for so long. She's one of those people that walks a red carpet and she will do every interview. Even when her PR person's like, we got to take her off. We got, you know, she doesn't have time. She's like, no, no, no. I'm going to get to everybody. And so she's really kind. She was great. Um, I would say Keanu Reeves was really cool. I got to interview him. Um, he was like amazing. Uh, I got to interview Mr. Big from Sex and the City. I had, had an exclusive with him and that was great. And, and most of them are really fun. Um, you know, sometimes you, you get a, a bad egg every once in a while. There's somebody that's grumpy. I think when I interviewed Kevin Bacon, he had a fight with his wife like right before. So he was like a little saucy. <laughs> on the right But it's, um, it's, it's always a lot of energy. Um, it's really fun. So that's probably the most, probably the most interesting interviews I've had. Um, locally, I would say every, everybody that I've interviewed locally here is so amazing. I mean, we do a lot with La Costa Film Festival, Ruby and Mike, um, they're amazing. I love doing, um, you know, we've done a lot of restaurants and bars. I mean, there's women's, you know, I had Sai Ma. I don't know if you know who Sai Ma is. She's like a, this uh, yoga guru from India that has this amazing following and, and her energy is off the wall. I mean, she came in and it was like, you could feel the power of her. I mean, so we've had, we've been so lucky. I mean, that people come into the studio, we sit down with them. Um, I just, I'm lucky every day. I kind of want to pinch myself like, whoa, I got to do this. I mean, this is what I get to do. So even when it's a bad day or a bad month, I have to remind myself I'm doing my dream job and I would never trade that, you know, for anything. <laughs> That's not so exciting. I love that, that you have so many different avenues of the red carpet, going to film festivals, working with people locally, and you're just as excited as I watch you talk about this. You're just as excited on either path. That's that's a true journalist and it's a true excitement coming from you. Well, yeah. And I think it's this, it's the story. I mean, for me, it doesn't matter if you're Keanu Reeves or you're, you know, Nicole, I mean, it's like, 
it's the story, you know, and for me, it's exciting to, to kind of, I love to find out how people work. How do they get to where they are? You know, and everybody has these great stories and that's what, what I love. And that's what I want to do with my business is bring that to the table. Because I think from a marketing standpoint, your story sets you apart. It's you, nobody's you. So that's in my world, that's what I love. Everybody has that that uniqueness, that authenticity. And I think that's where, you know, we can pull that from the red carpet. We can pull that from the web show. We can pull that for video production. That's the constant difference between you and everybody else that's out there. It is all about you. That's what, you know, it's interesting because, uh, <laughs> a lot of people I've been hearing from say, Oh, well, there's so many health coaches or there's so many online, uh, business coaches. And, and really I say, really? Or are you just in a saturated market? Your feed is filling you with everybody's doing it because that's what you're looking at. But if you go outside of your walls or outside of your social network online, which is this big compared to the world, is that people are still going, oh, organic's okay. Organic food? What? what? <laughs> I don't know. You know, I should drink water. What do you mean? I shouldn't eat fast food. And so I, you know, I really encourage people to take a look outside because you are you and your story is going to sell. People are going to identify and there is room in the market for you. Totally, totally. And I think we all get sucked into like, what's everybody doing? You know, looking at, you know, our competition or, and it's just like at the end of the day, you have to, you have to do research to know what's going on in your industry. But yes, you're right. You can't just go into this tiny bubble. You have to look at the bigger picture and, and everything else. And then also focus on what you're doing, right? Because your stuff is going to be different than other people. So what sets you apart? You know, what's your niche? And then just do your thing, right? Yes, I love it. All right. So let's talk about building an empire. I hear this from you. What does that mean to you? I see it on your Instagram stories. I see it, I think, in your hashtags. So what does that mean to you? So, I mean, I think your empire, you're always working on it, right? It's never, you know, I, I built, I have to stop and smell the roses sometimes and realize, hey, I have done a good job. <laughs> I have, you know, it's been five years and it's, you know, sometimes I'm, because again, I'm a perfectionist. I'm always like, it's not enough or, you know, I'm not where I need to be. So I think everybody's probably hard on themselves like that. But I mean, building an empire to me is, you know, originally it was creating the pulse, right? Who is the pulse? Nobody knew who the pulse was, you know, so it was creating that, um, you know, the name recognition, because when you work for a corporate company, that's like a paychecks or you know, these huge companies that I've worked for, everybody knows who they are. Nobody knew who the pulse was. So in the beginning, building an empire for me was that name recognition. So now people are like, Oh, the pulse, you know, I go somewhere. They're like, I know you from TV or I know the pulse. And it's just crazy that people, they know who we are. So that was the first part of building the empire. Um, fake it till you make it right. Cause no one, no one knew who I was. Um, but yeah, so that was the first part. And then the second part was like social media. I was one of those people that I did not want to get on social media. I, I fought it and I fought it and I fought it. And then I finally was like, all right, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. So I learned how to do it from the ground up. I sat there every day, 30 minutes in the morning on Twitter. Twitter was my baby at the time when I started. It was like Twitter, Twitter. Um, you know, then it was in, when Instagram came out, obviously, like loved it. But so for me, building that brand and building that empire became like the social media aspect and like who we are and taking you inside and being authentic. And so, yeah, I think there's a lot of companies out there that do, you know, not do what we do, but, you know, can bring you to an event. But the thing that I always say is I... I want to keep that authenticity, you know, and that's one thing that I've really tried with my brand every single day. I'm not on there. Like every day is perfect. Here's my selfie. And I look perfect. I have, you know, there's days you'll see me if you follow me on Insta stories and you'll see me having a bad day. You'll see me with a pimple. You'll see me without any makeup. A lot of times I have no makeup on. So I think it's being authentic. So the second part, I think for the brand or the empire is building that brand. So that's really, you know, we've worked really hard doing that. Um, and then for me, I think it's the goals. Like we were going back to like, what do you want with the company? Well, to me, I'm not, re I'm not done. I'm not even close to done. I mean, there's so much more I want. I have more TV shows in the works that I'm developing. Um, I want to be nationwide at some point, you know, I would like to have the pulse in every state, you know, or in every location. So it's like, you go here, here's the pulse in Nashville, you know, here's the pulse here, but obviously I, I can't do all that. So that's going to be something I want to really grow. Um, you know, so building our empire is 
I want people to know the polls. If there's, you know, if there's an event happening, I want the polls to be able to be there. People want us there. You know, if there's something nationwide, I want us to be able to cover it. So I, it's like a juggernaut. I mean, I'm like ready to take it to the next level. So I'm not, I'm not even close to being done <laughs> with, it, with the empire. <laughs> But I also, like you, I mean, I want to inspire people. So we do like our entrepreneur confessions where it's like, it's not easy. No one's going to sit here and tell you it's easy. And every day it's hard. And, and I'm one of those people, and I, I know you girls are too, you know, sometimes there's a lot of negativity and there's a lot of stuff on Facebook where people are like complaining a lot. And it's like, I think there's a, I think there's sort of a, a middle ground there. I think you should be honest with what's happening because not everything's perfect, but I also don't think building your brand, you have to be really careful with what you put out there. And I think sometimes people, they complain too much. And I think you really have to be careful of that. You know, even if I'm having a tough day, you're probably not going to, I'm probably not going to put it on you. If you know what I mean, I'm going to be as positive as I can, because I want to put that out there. I want people to feel positivity and it, I don't want people to feel negativity. It's like Yelp, you know, I don't go to Yelp and I don't give negative reviews. I never do. If I have a problem with a company or a business, I go directly to the business. I would never want to hurt someone's reputation like that. I don't know. I think you girls are the same way. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, we, we really, I especially stand by positivity, the things that come out of your mouth. You're, you're creating what you want by what you're, you're, you're saying. And, you know, when obviously we all have bad days and, and, and things happen and you have emotions, but you know, it's one thing to say, okay, I'm having a bad day and maybe I'll just take a break or pause for a second here. Uh, versus just spewing out on social media what's going on in a, in a negative way that might affect somebody else. So I, I totally hear you there. Um, I agree with you. You had said earlier about, uh, I take notes as we talk. <laughs> um, you had said something about, you were oh, you were putting it out there that you wanted the TV show and that you were you were very clear and concise. And I believe our energy, our emotion of what we want to do each day comes through. Uh, so even if you're having a bad day, it's really just reflecting inward instead of creating like, well, this day is going to be bad or this, because that will happen. I, you know, do you ever sit back and look at people and you go, how can negativity follow you around on a daily basis, day in and day out? Yes. It's so powerful to see that because when we're online and you have a TV show, you have a web show, you have, you know, you're out in the community. And if you brought all that stuff with you all the time and let that affect those around you, your business would move forward. <laughs> Nobody yeah. would want to be on my show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, nobody, but everybody knows it. I have a friend, I'm sure you do. Everybody knows somebody that's like, negative Nelly, or it's like somebody that you, you're just like, well, oh, it's so bad. And you're like, how can they have such bad luck? Like, but it's, it's a mind thing. It's because they're constantly, it's like when you say, I can't afford something. No, don't say that. I can't afford it. Right. So it's just that change in things, you know, and, and I have days where I feel negative, but you have to kind of, you have to shift it. And especially with being an entrepreneur, you know, you, you can't let that. I mean, if you sat around and thought about all of the negative stuff in your life, you'd never be successful in your business. You know, you have to change that mindset. So you got to put it out there and be clear and concise with what you want. Yeah. I, I always think that with each of my coaching clients, whether it's in Get It Done Gals or outside of Get It Done Gals, the very first thing I do is always talk about mindset and goals. Where are you at with your mindset? <laughs> and because passion in your why doesn't always cover it. Exactly. You can say you're passionate about something. You can say why you're doing this to help somebody else. But if you're not in the right mindset, you're not going to move forward. And our, the words that come out of our mouth are so, so important when we're showing up on Facebook Live or social media or going out in the community. So... Well, and having someone like a coach for, to be accountable, I mean, that's awesome. I think it's great to have somebody, if you need that, that can keep you accountable, right? Who do you go to? Or like, if you are having a bad day, what do you do to change your mindset? Making sure you're clear about that. Like, what do you really enjoy? You know, and that's important because, hey, sometimes you just got to go 
box. Like for me, I love to go boxing. Like I box it out and it makes me feel so much better. I mean, even in the corporate world, I had a, I had a boxing bag in my, in my garage. And every once in a while, I loved my boss because he could drive me bonkers. I have a little picture and I'd be like, I would just box, you know, <laughs> he's probably like, I don't want to know about that, but you just have to sort of do what makes, or go, you know, my dogs, like I love to walk with my dogs. I mean, just to go on a hike with my dogs to clear my mind, just walk away from it for 10 minutes, right? And come back and it's like a different, a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting very real and granular here. You know, it's building your empire takes hustle. It takes hard work. It takes that strategy and the blueprint to get there and also being very clear about what you want and coming at it from a, a very uh, powerful, positive mindset. Exactly, exactly. And it's, and you have to remember Rome wasn't built in a day. And so it does take time. I mean, I'm still not where I want to be with, I, with my business. I feel like I'm successful, but I'm, I am not to the point of where I want to be. And, and so I still have all these goals and it's, and then again, it's going to change, you know, my goals are going to change. So it does take time. I mean, the pulse has been in business five years. Um, but I see us in another two years, I see us really you know, we're starting to really take off now. So it's, I have these higher goals for the company and I'm really excited about the next few years for us. I'm excited too, to see everything you're doing. So <laughs> since you, since you are a successful business owner, you're the CEO of, of your life and business. What do you think it helps you stay on track with, if you have the strategy and you have the blueprint and all of these things are moving forward, what does your productivity look like? That's a good question. So, I mean, productivity, I would say like, what do I do every day? Kind of, are you asking me like sort of what, what I do each day? Yeah. Because you're, you're busy with these show with the show and with your social media. And I know that you have a team of people and you have these events and then you have the, the working with the video production. So what would you say, let's say your top tip for productivity is? Oh, that's a good question. So I would say um, carving out the time that you need to every day. So like some of the things that I do um, is I sort of manage my time with like, I have a to-do list. Obviously nothing, not everything gets crossed off my to-do list, but I have my, I have everything sort of prioritized. So for me, the things that suck my time, I have to be really careful about. So I try to just get on social media at certain times. Um, it, you know, in the morning for me is a big time, like, okay, I'm going to get on my social media in the morning. Um, here's my time for Instagram. Here's what I'm going to post today, blah, 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 blah. So I have specific times of the day that I get on my social media because I tend to, you know how it is when you get on Facebook, you're like, wait, I'm on Facebook. Well, didn't I come on here for something? What did I come on here for? <laughs> you're like distracted. So I, it's, setting those times in the day. And if it's my workout, right? Okay. My workout's going to get done. I know every morning when I get up, I'm going to do my workout. This is my time for that. So it's more of programming in what I'm going to do every day. And then obviously not every day is perfect. So some of it might carry over to the next day, but at least I know, okay, I'm on social media at these times. Here's when I'm meeting with my clients. Here's when I have my production meeting with my staff. You know, it's all scheduled for me. So I don't have any guessing. Um, for us, it's sort of like, like this week, you know, today I had this, I had, did my workout this morning. I got that done. I had my, I'm having this with you. I have a client meeting, um, that I'm going to, so I'll be going to meet with a client. I'm getting my hair done for the show. You know, then it's like, to, so it's just making sure that you're doing that. But I would say productivity wise is what I call speed bumps. Be very careful of speed bumps. So speed bumps are anybody that's going to slow down your grind. So it's kind of like when you have your hustle and your grind, you know, Facebook can, can do that. You know, um, people that maybe call you at a certain time that you don't have time to talk to that are, maybe it's somebody that, you know, calls you all the time to tell you about their issues. I mean, whatever that is for you, find out what those speed bumps are and just avoid them or prioritize your day so that they're not going to affect what you want to get done. I think that would probably be my biggest tip. I call them speed bumps. <laughs> I like that. That's cute. <laughs> it is speed bumps. <laughs> There's a guy in the corporate world that was a friend of mine and he, he said that like years ago and it just stuck in my head. I'm like, you're right. It's like a speed bump. You know, it's one of those things that you've got, you're so much momentum and, and what can really slow your productivity down. And I think that you have to, you are the CEO of your life. 
So you're the only person that can control everything. So you have to be one of those people that, and, and that's hard for me because sometimes I like to be like, Oh, I gotta do this. Like, and I want to make everybody happy and I want to get every, but at the end of the day, if you're running a business and you want to be productive, you have to say no to certain things. That's a big one. And you have to really, you know, be careful of the speed bumps. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. I'll never, <laughs> I will always forever remember that speed bump. That's really cute. <laughs> All right. So one last question. Who do you think is your biggest supporter as you grow your business? And, you know, we all start off as solopreneurs and now you have a team, but who really supports you in your day-to-day -day life and business? So that would be Israel, my partner. Um, I have to give him so many kudos because when I came up with this whole idea for the business, he never laughed at me. He never was like, you can't do it. And let me tell you, a lot of people were like, didn't get what I was doing. They were like, they was telling me I couldn't, this was never going to work. You know, so you're going to hear that, but he was never, he never did that. Um, and it was funny because I, the first video that we ever did, I filmed him, I made him be on camera and he was like, he hates to be on camera. So he was like, I can't do this. I'm like, all right, you got to be my cameraman. So I just gave him the camera. We didn't know how to, he had to learn how to use the camera. He had to come with me. The poor guy has to follow me around with a camera, which is not always fun. <laughs> but he never like complained about it. And he never, when we were showing up places and nobody knew who the heck we were, he never was like, you're crazy. He never thought, what are you doing? Why are you making me do this? He supported me from the beginning. He supported my idea. He never said I couldn't do it. Um, and he's still probably my biggest supporter, um, and my sounding board, you know, so it's like, even though, cause we still, you know, we work together, obviously we have more cameramen now. He's not like, you know, he doesn't, he still is my main guy, but, um, and my DP of photography. So he helps him produce the show and everything. So, um, I would say him, I mean, he, you know, working together as a couple is hard. It's not always easy, but we have a great relationship. We've been together 11 years and he's been like, He's always got my back, which is really nice. And he doesn't get jealous on the red carpet either, which is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he's the cameraman you want. You know, he's not a jealous person. So like we had um, Paul Stanley from Kiss. We were interviewing Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley from Kiss. And like Paul Stanley was like attacking me on the red carpet. And, and he didn't even, he was, he didn't even flinch. And then I'm like, you're so great. Like you didn't even, he's like, it's Paul Stanley. <laughs> So it was really funny. So he's, um, he's definitely my biggest supporter. So I love him. He's a, he's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. I love that. I think we all need a supporter, whether it's our partner or a business coach sometimes can provide that if someone doesn't have a partner, you know, finding accountability partners. I, I like to encourage people to do that. Just always having someone in your life when there's a, a down day or there's something that you need to run by somebody. I think it's really good to have people around us. And I think that's something that you've created in so many different levels within San Diego. You have your partner, then you have your team, and then you have this networking group, and then you have the show, and you're highlighting other business people, and they get to all enjoy one another's services and, and businesses. So you've created, I believe, a really good empire within San Diego, and I'm so excited to see where this goes in the next few years to come and congratulations for taking your show to all these other cities and going national. Well, thank you. And I love what you guys do and just collaborating and being able to do something with you guys. Cause I know you're really helping the entrepreneurs out there. So I love the opportunity to be here and share my story. Um, and I would love to do a live show with you guys. So I'm going to make you guys come on my show so we can talk about everything that we're doing. Cause I think it's so important. Um, you know, and, and just like you said, being accountable. And I think, what you guys offer businesses, you can hold them accountable. And there's so much that you can do. And people that don't have a direct um, idea of where they want to take the business, you guys can come in and really help with that. So thank you for the opportunity to be on the show with you. Yeah, thank you. And I, we're super excited to, to be on your show and talk further and, and um, share with us where we can find you and, um, you know, whether it's the TV, well, everywhere. Show it, tell us everywhere because we all want to follow you. 
So um, you guys, anyone that wants to learn anything about our business, the pulsesd.com on our website. From there, you can learn how to be on the live show. Um, you can follow us at the Pulse SD is our handle on Instagram, all of our social media, if you want to look at our Insta stories. But I would just say if um, somebody, if you have a great story out there, you're a business owner, you want to market yourself, you want to spotlight, I would love the opportunity to have you on my show um, and follow us at the Pulse SD and we'll be, we'll be taking this empire up a notch. So. I can't wait to show you what we have coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.